In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you what it takes to master major scales on the guitar. I'm gonna show you how to do it, and I'm gonna show you five different levels of how to work on it. So even if you're a complete beginner, you can start this process, and if you are very advanced, I have a challenging exercise for you at the higher level of how to master major scales. Let's do it. I need to say why it's important to master major scales on any instrument but it is and I don't like to talk too much about you know how to play specific genres as much as how to use the way music works and the theory and the technique and how to play the guitar in general for whatever stylistic outcome you want All most genres are more similar than we think. It's often just some sort of rhythmic feel that is different or some little bit of different harmonic language, but all of it in tonal music is related to the major scale. So no matter what you're into or up to or interested in or ambitious about, the major scales are going to be your fundamental source for everything tonal that you're working on. So yes, a tonal music uh, is not as much drawing from well is not drawing from the major scale but everything else it can be kind of boiled back down to how it comes from that uh, even a tonal music though is can be understood in terms of intervallic relationships that come from a pretty necessary understanding of the major scale so if you're into whatever genre if you want to play more kind of tasty pentatonic licks or rock music or Definitely what we're going to talk about here is necessary for jazz music, but if you're a songwriter and you want to see how the fretboard works better, all this stuff, I have an exercise for you at whatever level of playing that you're at that is going to immensely help with seeing how things are laid out on the fretboard and just a total musicianship challenge that I think is super fun. So, okay, that's a, a, enough about kind of why I think it's important and why it's worth doing really almost academic kind of training on your major scales to get to the inspired artistic musical output that you want to get to. But uh, I just want to say something about, you know, using the word mastering. Um, it's a little clicky, of course, but uh, what do I mean when I'm talking about mastering? I'm actually going to go a, a certain direction with this. And what I want to talk about is the ability to see what key you're in and what scale you're in. Um, at any time to be able to switch to it quickly. This is the kind of mastering that I'm talking about. There are lots of things you can do to work on major scales. And I think that there's a lot of information out there about, um, you know, learn patterns, play uh, with different melodic patterns, play with the, this scale type where you're playing uh, three notes per string instead of two notes per string or whatever. But what I'm talking about is just being able to see the key that you're in and be able to switch to that quickly. So what I see happening a lot is that once, so say, and maybe you're in this position where you like to improvise around, noodle around, that kind of thing. Once you review and kind of find that scale place, uh, that location, those notes, kind of review it, you can start playing some stuff that sounds good, especially you kind of get those, get get the position uh, figured out and your, inter your musical intuition starts to starts to just come out. You can just be yourself. That phrasing comes out. Your taste comes out. But it takes that upfront kind of review of, oh, wait, where am I? What, it, what scale am I doing? Let me review it. Oh, now I sound good. So what I'm talking about is to not have that buffer time. We just want to be able to switch to a key and boom, we are right there, no matter where we are on the fretboard. And that's without having to jump around. So really, what it's coming down to in this video is being able to play any key with any of the five scale forms within roughly the same position, like with physically wherever you were on the fretboard to just be able to switch and see it. This is crazy useful for, again, anything that you're trying to do in music. And even if you don't see how that's going to be applicable yet, if you give the exercise a try, you'll start to see opportunities opening up. 
So I'm going to give you the five scale forms that allow us to play in any key all over the fretboard. And then we're going to use those five scale forms to actually play in one place on the fretboard, but in any key. So you can use these five to play again in one key all over the fretboard or in any key in one place on the fretboard. And of course, that knowledge, really what it leads to, if you can play in one place in any key, it actually means you can play anywhere in any key by using those same physical shapes. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to talk about the left hand fingerings to use. I have it written down over here so I tell you everything. Uh, I'm going to talk about the circle of fourths um, and how we're going to use that to go between our keys and quickly switch. And I am going to give you five levels of how to practice it. So five exercise levels uh, for beginner, intermediate, level three, proficient, level four, professional, level five, master. Those labels are whatever. It's five levels. One, two, three, four, five. It's just kind of fun to, lay, uh, to make up labels for them. Be beginner, intermediate, proficient, professional, and master. So if you think you're pretty good at major scales, give this master exercise a try. And if you are just like, what are you talking about? I've just started playing guitar yesterday. You can give the beginner version a try and see maybe where you fit in the middle. Again, links in the description to jump to any section here. Okay, so with the five major scale forms that allow us to play in any key all over the neck or in all the keys in one place on the neck, with those, and this is that one single position thing, there are, the, there are five major scale forms, and you might have seen them before if you've been playing around. I just did a video on the left hand fingering for them. Um, my last video was on that. So these five major scale forms, they can all be played. You can play in any of the 12 keys that exist in a span of only three fret positions on the fretboard. So any three frets on the fretboard, and I'm going to have us do it in position four, position five, and position six. So if your first finger's lined up with fret four, you're in position four. First finger's lined up with fret five, you're in position five. First finger's lined up with fret six, you're in position six. So any three frets spanning any three fret positions, so here, here, and here, we can play in all 12 keys in that within that distance. So that goes for up here on the neck as well. Okay, so all 12 keys. So the first thing we wanna do is be able to see those 12 keys within that limited range. And I'm gonna give you exactly what roots to play off and exactly which shapes to use. So this is not just for this exercise. This actually is the foundation and the basis for a super deep improvisation method that I've been using for years and really making sure that I see and feel and can play and hear everything within that limited position. And I, and I pretty much spend a lot of time in the four, five, and six position, but it can work anywhere. And then from there can expand out to seeing how it almost instantly connects to being able to play anywhere on the fretboard. So where I'm telling you to play these major scales, if you're following any of my videos and, and stuff I'm gonna put out in the future, I'm gonna talk about this same type of thing a bunch. I mean, this is the foundation, where those roots are that I want you to see them and where exactly those uh, major scales exist within those three fret positions. So just a quick note about playing within one position. It f if, if any of you have been improvising uh, at all and kind of been dabbling in this, and if not, here, here's something that happens a lot. We might get really comfortable playing with a certain uh, scale form. I mean, like a pentatonic scale form like this is a great example. Somebody might get used to this and then say they're thinking of it as A minor right now, and those, that's not even the scale form we're gonna use. You'll see what I'm talking about though when we get to the scale forms I wanna show you. But if the key changed to D minor, we would be comfortable just jumping up to here and say, oh, D is here, I'm gonna play the same scale form. So if, we get, if you get pretty friendly with one of the five scale forms, the tendency is going to be to just jump to that place where that exists. And again, so I know, Leave me a comment if you can relate to that. I mean, if you've been working on improvising at all, that is what happens. It happens to all of us. So this method is the antidote to that. This method fills in the gaps because it's going to force you to play a certain scale form out of the five when you play a certain key. There's not gonna be, according to the rules of the exercise, there's not gonna be an option. You don't get to say, ooh, where am I comfortable playing A flat? You have to play A flat here which is, I say A flat because that's the, that's the key and that's the scale form that we often skip and overlook. And the reason is because the lowest root is on the fourth string. 
So um, if you've been skipping around like that, that's probably one you've been skipping. So this method forces us to actually get really comfortable with that. We want to be equally comfortable with all of them. So it really fills in the gaps. Okay, so I want to show you exactly where I think each scale form should be played. We're going to start with this with C right here. We're going to go through the circle of fourth. So I want this scale form. They're in, in the cage system, this would be called the G form. So where I've written it, uh, the position that I want you to play that in is fifth position. It shifts out and it shifts back in, but that's that scale form. So here are the five scale forms and also what is written here is exactly where I want you to play them every time. So uh, labeling wise, sometimes you'll see this said, you know, people will call it pattern one, pattern two or something like that. There's not really an order to them, but in the cage system, they could be called uh, the C form, the A form, the G form, the E form. Um, in any case, I'll label it as the cage system on here um, just to have a label for it. So. Um, this will be G form, for example. Um, but so what I what I'm showing you here is exactly where I want you to play these. So the G form is played with the root when you're playing off of C. So you're going to play G form when you play the key of C, and you're going to play G form when you play the key of D flat. Okay. You're going to play C form when you play the key of E F or G flat, okay? You're gonna play B, uh, you're going to play the E form when you're playing the key of A, B flat, or B. You're going to play the A form when you are playing the key of D, E flat, D or E flat, just those two. And then you're gonna play the D form when you're playing the key of G or A flat, okay? So you can come back and reference that if you want to. Um, the, there's, again, use the link to jump back to that if you want to see, okay, which scale form do I use for which key? And those roots are highlighted for you there. So now just what I want to have us do is just find the roots themselves and go through the circle of fourths. The circle of fourths is a direction of moving through keys that, that has one note changing every time. Circle of fifths is a little more common to talk about. Uh, the circle of fifths and the circle of fourths are the same thing. If you go one key over um, to change one note by one half step, you're going one direction that's a fifth away or the other direction that's a fourth away. So it's the same thing, two different directions. If that doesn't make any sense to you because you haven't heard of that before, it's not really my main point. What we're going to be doing is showing you the roots through the circle of fourths. And what I want you to know about that is that every time we change a key, one note from the previous scale is moving a half step and that's all to make the new other scale. So it's kind of a nice way to move through the scales one note changing at a time. So here are our roots in the order that we want to memorize them for the circle of fourths. So this is C. Next uh, in the circle of fourths is F. So root C. That's fret eight. Fret eight on the fifth string and that is F. Now we do B flat on the sixth fret, B flat, sixth fret, E flat, sixth fret, A flat, sixth fret. I went string six, five, four. Okay, then I'm jumping down to D flat on the sixth string, G flat or F sharp on the fifth string, and you'll see it in the diagram too. Then B, then E, then A, then D, then G. And that's all 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 keys, all the keys. Those are the roots that I want you to jump to in your mind and base the scales off of, okay? So C is here. I'm just gonna play it again so you can hear I'm going through this, the roots of the circle of fourths. This is kind of a pre-exercise. I want you to, to map this out to start seeing your scales. And I'll do other videos in the future on other types of scales using, you know, this, from this same starting point. So get, get used to this. changing. The fingers don't really matter the left hand here yet. Just starting to see those, okay? F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, 
G. Okay, let me know if you have any questions about that. Your scale is going to be based off of each of those notes. So if I think of E flat, what's my scale? My, I right away think of this root because that's where we m decided it, its location is. And then I see the scale kind of come alive around it. Okay. Okay, let's now dive into these five levels of how to work on this and master the major scales and the five levels of being able to practice this. So level one, the beginner level, is that I want you to take, we, we found those roots, you have to know where those roots are in those spots, and then you have to know where the associated scale form out of the five is, okay? So when we say we're on C, then that G form scale is the one that applies to it, okay? You don't even need to be able to play the whole thing yet. This beginner level is just to play one, two, three off of that lowest root. That's actually great for anybody to do if you're not quite, if this isn't quite clicking yet, this is really good to do because it forces you to get into position of that scale form. So this first exercise, this beginning level is one, two, three. You did that off C. Next key is F, okay, and I do one, two, three off of F, then I go to B flat. So we just went through the roots themselves. This is like two notes added on to it. Off B flat, one, two, three, the first three notes. E flat in its location, one, two, three, okay. A flat in its location, one, two, three. D flat, one, two, three, G flat, one, two, three, B natural, one, two, three, E. Had to shift over, that's part of this, if we're in these three these uh, three fret positions, you do have to have a shift between if you're uh, B and E. So one, two, three off B, one, two, three off E, one, two, three off A, one, two, three off D, one, two, three off G. That's the beginning level of this. Already, if you're not comfortable with kind of seeing keys changing, that's going to be already pretty cool. Um, it's very similar to what people have to do to improvise over chords changing. You're kind of seeing the root of a new place and the root of a new key, the root of a new chord, the root of a new scale, and then playing off of that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'll do it again without describing through just so you get the demonstration. level one. Okay, level two is the intermediate level. This is just mapping out all your scale forms in those exact places. It's kind of the obvious thing to do. Maybe if I didn't list these exercises out just from the description I was giving about it, this is already what you'd be doing. Like, okay, let me let me play these scales in the position, in the exact position you're telling me to, and make sure you're seeing it off that root because it's we can learn these scale forms as just physical shapes and that can even that can be quite good but we want to see it as the major scale root for sure so what i recommend doing we're just mapping it out so this is just can you play through all 12 out of time doesn't matter how quick you're switching anything like that just can you get through them and kind of see them that's why i call it mapping it out but i want you to start on the root that i told you to start on and i want you to end on that same root that we mapped out through the circle of fourths so you'll go all the way up to your highest note back down and then below if there are notes below the root and then back so for example in this first key and i'll really i'll demonstrate through the whole thing So I started on this C, I played everything, I went below it and then back. So we start on it and we end on it just so we're really concrete about that. Plus it sounds more like the major scale as well. So one note about this, and this was my last video, was about something I call the inchworm technique, which is just a cute name for uh, contracting your hand position and then extending it out the other way instead of reaching out for it. So when there's a position shift in a scale form, using that inchworm technique, just a little left hand thing. You don't even, um, if you're comfortable switching, it's not like everyone has to do that. It's just something I think really feels good ergonomically and optimizes it. So you can check that video out too if you wanna see a more detailed explanation. So I did see, uh, here's F. Okay, so there's F, here's B flat, there's our root. I don't want you to worry about speed or anything. I'm just demonstrating through it. So really you're mapping it out right now. 
not even worrying about time or anything. This is E-flat. Okay. A-flat is the next root. Here's the scale off it. Okay, there's A-flat. And then D-flat is here. Is the next one. Now, we already played five, so now you're just repeating scale forms off different roots. So this is the same, this is the G form again, like we did on C. Okay, G flat is gonna be the same one we did on F. Okay, B is the E form, here's that. is E. Okay, really sounds major when you do it that way. Here's A. Cool, here's D, off this note. Great, here is G, off this note. That was all 12. It would start over again, okay? So that is level, um, that's level two, right? That's the intermediate level. Like, can you even just find all those and, and think, okay, here's G that root, what scale out of those five is built off of that? Take your time. Totally cool to take your time with it. Um, you know, when you're in this position, if you could do a flashcard thing too, D comes up, which of the five is it? Okay, found D. Now, which of the five is it? If you can do it, you know, without map it out, without looking at, at the five shapes, that's great too. But that's that level of exercise, just mapping it out. Okay, here is level three. So now it's the same thing, but I actually want you to do it in time. So same thing from that root highest back below the root land on the root and then just jump to the next one just switch keys in time okay so at a pace you don't have to use a metronome if you trust yourself to play you know at a pace it doesn't have to be like metronomically in time just like you're playing music like when you play if you play with friends and there's a pace there's a rhythm to it uh use a metronome if you want to or don't trust yourself to kind of keep a pace but um we want to be able to see the key switch that quickly. So right when you're done, you just jump to that next root and play the next one, okay? So here's how that exercise goes. Here's my pace. Playing C. I'm inclined to speed up a little bit. I might do that in a second on purpose. F. So yes, there was a little pause there, just because it fits with the timing, and that's how they all, all will be. So I'm speeding up a little on purpose just to demonstrate B flat. So there's a little breath between each key. Okay, speeding up on purpose. E flat. A flat. We want to see the full form that quickly. D flat. show up when you switch to that root. Just want to kind of see it spread out. E flat. Whoops, just E natural, I mean. Played the right thing, said the wrong thing. A. D. G. was all 12. So the way I kind of sped up on purpose um, to, to move it along faster, that's what I mean by it doesn't have to be with a metronome, right? I was obviously at a pace. Again, if you're playing with a drummer and like everyone decides to speed up, you're still playing in time or, you know, there might be a um, like retardando in classical music at the end where they slow down, but they're in time. So if you're in control of it and you know that you're doing that and why, 
Um, I kind of like that because when you feel like you're super on it, you can you can kind of speed up a little bit. You're at a pace still. And then if you're if you're kind of like, whoa, this is a little fast, you can choose to s slow down. However, use the metronome if you, if you like to do that and you want to challenge yourself at like, ooh, what's my exact tempo that I can manage to do this at? So I ho hope you can already see how this is quite a challenge. You, you want to be able to see the, the scale switch that quick. If you can do that in time, that's pretty proficient. This is level three. This is the proficient level. That's pretty cool. You know, if someone says, oh, yeah, we're playing in ski and you're just like, oh, yeah. Boom, there's that root, there's the scale. Like That's how quickly you're, you wanna visualize it, see it, your hands know it, ready to play it, all that stuff. Okay, level four, this is what I call the professional level. This is where it, it really starts to be this challenge, even for improvisers, even for really comfortable improvisers, this is kind of, this is the next level for a lot of improvisers, um, where while we are improvising, we want to have keys change in time and be able to track those play in those comfortably so this level is to play in time and by play i mean now you can just improvise noodle kind of play whatever you want and that alone could could make it challenging we want to play in time through all the keys through the circle of fourths uh four bars for each key and you can just phrase that however you want so creating a loop for yourself or having a play along um, or something like that so um so again we want to improvise and don't worry about how cool it sounds right now. Don't worry about if it's the guitar solo you want on your album or anything like that or how or the phrasing or anything. You can do any kind of phrasing you want, but the challenge here, and I did a whole video on this about when you are practicing and wanting to get the most out of your practicing, make sure you understand what the main focus is at any given time. So the main focus right now is not do we sound amazing and did we play that lick we wanted to play or that melody or whatever? It's just, are we seeing the keys change and are we, are we playing fluently between them? You know, are we playing the correct notes as the keys change? Okay, so this is really fun because you do have to do it with, um, you can do it in time with a metronome, but do it with a backing track of, of some kind, whether it's yourself or, or anything. So, um, so again, we're just worried about, are we playing in the right key when the key changes this is huge again it's the level it's the next level for anyone really comfortable improvising in a single key you know in a single scale like sure we'll jam all night on in a key what key is the next song in that kind of thing it's the natural next step but the gap is so huge i mean it's really hard to to make that switch from being comfortable improvising to switching in the moment between keys so like i said earlier this this kind of thing is just the essential stuff for jazz improvisation but it is really just musical fitness for any of us for what we want to be working on or doing and even for music within a key or songwriting or something um, it starts to get us used to thinking of what kind of notes a collection of notes might exist as chords change so you're kind of playing the changes as people might say so anyway this level is to jam along as the keys change through the circle of fourths so to do this, I'm going to use a piece of software that I really like to use called iReal Pro. I use this all the time to jam with a lot of friends and colleagues that I know use this all the time. It's very popular, very easy to use. Um, it's not really about you know the most amazing sounding backing track as much as just giving you control over quickly something to play over and practice over. And I think it's really helpful. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just using it to demonstrate this is how I would practice this. Here we go. I'm in C. F.
So I went forward a little bit ahead, uh, went on to C and then F again, but I went through all the keys and I played exactly that scale form in time as the jam track was happening. I think that is super fun to do and just an amazing challenge. And with all of these, the reason there's five levels here and the reason it's important, I think, to put things into levels is that finding the right amount of challenge is so important when you're practicing. You want that thing that is hard and stimulating and like you can taste it and you 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 want it and, and it's beyond what you can do now and you, and you work on it. If I was just told everyone to do that one, two, three and someone has been playing scales for a while, that's not gonna be that helpful. But if I just tell everyone to do this right away and you're just starting, that's not gonna be that helpful. So finding your right place, I think this one might be where a lot of people are if you've been playing for a bit and it's just a really fun challenge. There's a lot to do with scales again with, you know, how to master playing all over with one scale, but this changing keys thing is, uh, is a whole other uh, skill that we have to kind of mentally work through. So another thing there is that I was, I was doing a fair amount of playing something that was appropriate for that chord that I was on. Um, and I was trying not to pay too much attention to worrying about just like I said, like, is, is this the, the best solo I ever played or whatever? But, uh, but I can't help but place target the changes a little bit, target the chord tones a little bit, uh, just because I've done that a lot. But don't sweat it if it doesn't sound like that or, or sound cool. If it just sounds like this is so scalar, just make sure you're seeing that scale change and it's powerful. Okay, let's move on to level five. Okay, so level five, which I'm calling the master level. This one is... Same idea, but just harder. I want us to do two measures each. I want us to not do any phrasing that we want, but instead do constant eighth notes. So you have to play constant eighth notes, which is gonna sound even less like something you might you know, wish was on your song as a lead guitar part, but it's not about a lead guitar part. It's about the fitness of being able to master the scales and seeing them change within the same position. So constant eighth notes and that's actually something super powerful for improvising in general if we can play constant notes it's just this proof to ourselves and to our our hands kind of doing doing this enough that you can jump to any note if you need to that you you don't have to pause because you ran out of what to do you get to pause because you want it to musically so the constant eighth notes i think is is one of the coolest ways to practice improvisation uh, again for like just a musicianship training perspective so constant eighth notes two measures for each key uh through all the keys just like before and then one added thing which is we want to connect by step so we don't this is something that even in the other exercise you might see happens a lot especially given the other exercises where i wanted you to start on the root you're probably going to have a tendency to jump to the root when the key changes um, and in the other ones, I didn't say you couldn't do that. So you might be bothered by how, like, oh, I keep I keep jumping to it. It's okay. Let it happen in the other ones. You know, you can try not to, but it's not against the rules. Uh, this one, it is against the rules. You where unless you're right by the root, wherever you are, you have to continue playing eighth notes by step. You can actually stay on the same note if you want to, because they have so many overlapping notes, or just keep playing one direction or the other by step it's very it's pretty rarely going to be the note that's different in the key that changes but sometimes it might land on that which would be like the four of the new key and sometimes people call that an avoid note on a major chord but don't worry about that at all sounds fine if you're just continuing to play so um playing by step uh constant eighth notes and you know after this you can just work on faster tempos or something like that but let's go ahead and demonstrate this one okay this is that final level all right, let's test this one out. Like I said, it's gonna sound more scalar than the other one because there's not room to really make musical ideas happen with all the constant eighth notes, but uh, let's see if I can stay in the scales. Let's do it. Thank you. 
that's tough. That is tough. Uh, you know, the, the level four is a little more fun. Got to get to kind of try to be more musical on it. That fifth one is really just a challenge. Of course, there's all kinds of variations. You can do one measure. You can do one measure slower so it's doable or, you know, increase it. You could do your free, any kind of phrasing you want with two measures, of course, right? I'm just choosing, I'm just choosing some very specific parameters to suggest to you to try. Certainly take some liberties if you want to. And if you don't feel comfortable kind of choosing for yourself what kind of parameters to set, then that's why these are here for you to just, cool, try that. Uh, the, the fifth one takes, I think more skill, more quickness. Um, it's harder to, to, to connect by step. It's really tricky to just constantly play is really tricky. So part of the idea is that if you're, if you're doing this, say you're do, do number four and you're like, wow, I can do it, but I can barely do it. And then you get, you go ahead and go on to level five and you work on that and you come back to just try to enjoy jamming on it in level four, then you'll be much more free. Then you'll be much more free with it. So, so again, there's an aspect of like maybe playing different things based on what chord is being played. I'm really just wanting it to be the general key for now. But I'm saying this again because just as a heads up, the way that I would suggest and I will be suggesting practicing on specific chords, mapping out chord tones, arpeggios, other types of scales like modes or melodic minor is with a very similar process. So if you were to do just chord tones through the circle of fourths or something like that, it's the same kind of process. S certainly stay tuned for stuff like that because I'm going to be doing a lot about improvisation um, in this way that I really have found is extremely potent, you know, really gets us to the source and get the most out of our practicing to really map things out. I mean, I played uh, improvising and playing jazz and, and changing keys and all this stuff for a long time, you know, kind of trying to get master the whole fretboard. And it was years later when I finally did this type of method where I tried to stay in one place that the gaps, that the things I was avoiding started getting filled in those shapes, those scale forms that I was not as comfortable with, I started just seeing everything pretty equally. So I'm a huge advocate of this, um, hence why I'm making this video and saying, do it, do it and try it. And even just a little bit, right? It's it's like, it's exercise, it's, it's fitness. And I really think it'll help your playing, your thinking on the fretboard, your compositions, your remembering music longer, learning it quicker, all of that stuff. So. Um, stay tuned for other videos on this kind of thing. Of course, subscribe if you want to catch those. And what I would say about each level, um, get comfortable with the level you're on. Use it kind of as a warm up until it feels like just cool, I got this. It's kind of a no brainer. I can use it as a warm up. When you feel that good about it, then move on to that next level challenge for yourself. So again, I know I didn't talk about things like feel and phrasing and tone and melodic ideas and things like this, but I really just want to hone it in on saying this one aspect of playing where you can see the keys change, this is how to work on it. So if you were working on that other stuff too, awesome. It's all going to kind of get baked together as you rotate through practicing different things. But this is one way to work on one specific thing that is immensely helpful. And hey, if you made it this far in the video, you're probably pretty interested in learning guitar uh, wanting to practice seriously and really do what makes the most sense to make the most of your time and improve your musicianship and be an artist, be a musician, uh, or you just like to nerd out on this stuff like I do. So if this feels helpful for you, and I'm just getting this channel started, I'm just getting things rolling. I have a video coming out once a week, every Tuesday. I have all of this, all of these curriculums exercises, things I've been teaching for over 16 years, things I am so excited to share with you. Um, if you're if you're into it, if you're into this style of learning and the way that I'm presenting things, um, leave a comment. Let me know how, what you're up to, what you're working on, what challenges you have. If you have questions or if you're just like, cool, I dig this, you know, let me know. Uh, I'm here to really try to, uh, to help you. And uh, I want to bring stuff that I've been teaching in real life online and uh, really reach some more people. Um, so let me know. Leaving a comment is really helpful because I'm just getting the channel going and that's kind of a big part of, of helping it kind of boost forward. And so for now, just trying my best getting some lessons up. So I'd love to hear from you and uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you in another lesson in the future. Happy practicing.